November Ascension energies are here, my friend, and they are intense. Stay tuned. I've got everything you need to know. What's up, beautiful? It's Lisa Roulette, and I'm here to help you heal, navigate your ascension journey, and create a life you love. I want to give a humongous thanks to all of my subscribers. We are now up to a little over 2,000 subscribers. I know that's tiny in the way of YouTube, but it's a very big deal for me and the family that we're creating here. So if you are a part of the family, please make sure that you share the channel, share some of the videos, like, comment, because that lets more people know about the work that we are doing. What kind of work are we doing on this channel? We are doing the work of the light worker. And if you're listening to this now, you undoubtedly are a light worker. So again, welcome to the family. Help me grow the channel by liking, sharing, and commenting on the videos, and I will love you even more in return. So let's dive right into November Ascension energies. These were really hard, you guys. Many of you know that I channel monthly energies from our beloved Ascension support team because part of my light work is to be able to communicate complex subjects for people so that they can digest them and really apply them over their light work. This was just a hard month. It was hard for me not to slip into fear. There was just a lot of powerful messages that came through, but I chose two in particular because I thought they were the most powerful. Now I'm going to give you one up front, and then everything that supports that message. And then I'm going to give you the second one more toward the end, because you won't understand the second one unless you understand the first and all of the things that support it. So definitely stay tuned until the end. I do have some notes, so forgive me. Normally, I don't like to use notes in my videos, but this was... This was a rough month, so I'm going to use some notes so I make it crystal clear for you. And if you have any questions, you know what to do. Just comment below, and I'm happy to answer any and all questions that come in. So the first primary message was either face the facts or face the music. And that was really big because it sounded almost like a threat. But then I started to really, you know, digest it and pull the message apart. The music can be played two ways. It can be played as part of humanity's demise, or it can be played as part of the new earth. And you can use your imagination as what the musical composition would sound like in humanity's demise versus the new earth, right? Obviously a lot more pleasant toward the new earth. So we know what the music could be and we have the opportunity to go in either direction and play whatever composition we want. But we need the facts to actually create the composition of the new earth. And here are the primary facts that I was reminded of. The first is that the collective consciousness, or what we also know as the hive mind, or the hive mind comes out of the collective consciousness, is very ill. And from an intuitive mind's eye, it's almost like we are starting to see massive exponential cancer growth. And if we don't start to care for it pronto, it's not going to have a chance. And it's definitely going to end up as part of the demise of humanity. How does the hive mind get created? Basically through media, right? Through mass media, through social media. And we have to be very mindful as light workers what we're paying attention to. And I'm going to tell you how to be mindful of what you're paying attention to in just a minute. But let's talk about fact number two, because this is really important. We're reminded of the fact that consciousness is magnetic. Consciousness flows in a stream. Wherever the predominant awareness, mass consciousness, hive mind is pointed, it is extremely easy to get magnetized or sucked up into that stream. And very difficult to get out of once you're in it. Very, very difficult to get out of. I mean, just think about a raging stream, like just getting sucked in it. It's not like you can easily jump onto shore. Consciousness is magnetic. And if we're not careful as light workers, we are going to end up in that stream and we're not going to be able to get out of it. And of course, once you're in that stream, your light gets siphoned away. Now, where is it streaming toward? Fear. It's streaming toward fear. Mass consciousness, the hive mind is streaming toward fear. But it, again, in my intuitive mind's eye, I don't even see it like we're streaming toward something. We're actually in a stream of fear, like almost like a 
forgive my language, but a stream of freaking shit. It's so low vibrationally and it's it has the potential to literally suck the light out of us, which of course is our life. Our light is what is necessary to help heal the planet and to help create the new earth. So when we get stuck in the hive mind and we allow our consciousness to stream toward fear, our light gets siphoned away and we have less ability to do our very important work on the earth at this time. Third fact is that fear is failure on all levels, but most importantly, it is failure to thrive. So if we are going to create the new earth where the music composition is much more palatable and sweeter, we need to be very, very careful not to, again, go into that stream of consciousness. Because remember what happens in fear. Consciousness contracts, right? The lower the vibration that you embody, consciousness contracts. The lower the vibration that you hold, less light, okay? When you are coming out of fear or you're headed toward love or you're vibrating in love, you are not only expanding your awareness, but you're building the light body. The light body is the aura. And the more light that we can emanate from within and push out from the physical body into out through the auric field and then beyond out into the universe, the more powerful we are as light workers. So this is why I'm saying it is so important not to get sucked up by the very, very powerful, like I can't even express how powerful the magnetic force of the hive mind is. Also keeping in mind that when we're in fear and in a contracted state of consciousness, our ability to perceive the solutions to our problems, the remedies to our wounds, and the possibilities for our future with which we're trying to create that new earth, the possibilities to create that new earth, they go away. We can't perceive them anymore. Everything closes in on us. And then when everything closes in on us, we get so scared that we let people start making decisions for us. We look to leaders to show us the way. The problem is, is that most of our leaders are largely responsible for creating the fear. So that's problematic, isn't it? Lots to consider there. Again, if you have questions, please, by all means, ask below. All right. So those are the four facts. The collective mind is sick. It's not well. Consciousness is magnetic. Fear is failure on all levels, but in particular, failure to thrive, right? So if we fail to thrive, the music that we're going to face is that in on that trajectory to, toward the demise of humanity. And when we sink into contracted states of awareness, which is what fear does, we end up not being able to perceive the solutions to our problems, the remedies to our wounds, and the possibilities for our future. And thus, we rely on other people who are supposed to be leading us, unfortunately, most of the people who are leading us are leading us into fear. So the second message was supreme authority. Supreme authority over your consciousness, family of light. You have got to be able to discern what is right for you and what is wrong for you in your awareness. If you get stuck in absorbing mass media, social media, I'm not saying that you're, you're not, you shouldn't be doing that. I'm just saying that you have to be careful with what you are absorbing because it is that absorption that will take you immediately in sucked into that highly magnetic hive mind that is literally floating in shit. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, there are no better words. Supreme authority over your conscious awareness. Now, one of the ways that we take supreme authority over our conscious awareness is we become the neutral observer. And this is very challenging. When we start to stream toward fear, we lose control of our consciousness. The hive mind takes over. 
the magnet pull gets stronger and stronger. Our light gets siphoned away from us. We give away our control. We give away our supreme authority and our supreme authority is so important. So becoming the neutral observer, being able to take that high self position and discern, is this right for me or wrong for me is the first key. But ultimately being able to just stay neutral in the face of adversity, in the face of fear, in the face of crisis, to just stay neutral. Being able to stay neutral allows you to not only take supreme authority over your consciousness and direct it in the way that you want to direct it, but it also creates intensely powerful boundaries, which are very, very good right now. I think boundaries are always important, but right now we all need boundaries, especially light workers. Like as a warrior of consciousness, which is really what just another word for, for light worker, you need to protect your fortress. And that is going to require that you take supreme authority and be able to become the neutral observer and build those boundaries. Okay. This is what you need in order to continue to work your light and also to really help humanity to hear that sweet music of the new earth. Because as you know, you are a bringer of light of the dawn that will illuminate the new earth. You're very special friends. Very, very special. That's a wrap for this video. Thank you guys so much. Remember, stay in the luminosity of your beautiful light and you are loved.